Good morning everybody, my name is Leanne Peard, Social Media Specialist and today's interview has given me the great privilege to introduce Lorai Tan and Lorai is a coach and her business is Executive Women Coaches. So welcome Lorai to this morning and I, I thank you for giving me your time and your uh, the opportunity to discuss what you do and how you assist women today. Oh, it's a pleasure, pleasure, Leah. Great to be with you. Thank you. So, Laura, would you like to just share with us and the listeners um, a little bit about your journey and how you became a coach? Well, it's a it's a one of those long, convoluted journeys, but I've learned in retrospect nothing goes to waste. <laughs> so awesome. It, <laughs> <laughs> every, every every bit of uh, knowledge or or the skills that a person has has uh, acquired is is will be integrated at some stage and will be used provided you see the opportunities. Uh, I'll tell you what I mean. Uh, my background is in in medical science research, and I spent a lot of time at university being a good student, among other things. And funnily enough. After I graduated my undergraduate degree, uh, I followed my husband to to his workplace, while, and I found that there were there were no jobs for people to, with science degrees, and it was quite depressing for a while. And I thought, no, this is this is not good, and this is a bit crap. So, and what I drew on was the fact that I used to play music as a kid, and uh, I picked up the guitar and I learned to play it by myself, self taught, and uh, and I ended up playing while I was going through uni. I actually played in bands just to you know, earn a bit of extra money. And when I went to this little country town where, where my husband was working with, with uh, because of his career, um, I found that I could go into a music shop one day out of just, you know, sure, like, whatever, because there weren't any jobs. I said, look, if I teach music in your shop, I'll split the proceeds with you. Are you okay with it? And basically with the manager of the music shop, Bruce, on a handshake, he said, yeah. And I spent the next three or four years teaching music and actually earning an income from that, playing in bands. And eventually I did find some work in, in, in the scientific field. But here's the rub. My my background was medical science and I was doing ecology and it was like as different as chalk and cheese. Most people would say science is science. It's not. It's very specialized. And then I had to learn a whole new language. But the point is um, I didn't see it as being painful I could have, but I saw it as a as an adventure, and you know, being curious, what what is this all about? And so, that has helped me. And I ended up after a while realizing that playing music was the end, and I would go back to um, do my PhD, and I was in freshwater ecology, so that was interesting. And I did that there, finished a degree, a PhD in three years, as in handed up my thesis within three years, which is unheard of, and then the first job I got was as a breast cancer uh, research fellow. So it was back to medical science. And then when I came back to medical science, the people were going, so what did you do for your PhD? Freshwater ecology, what's that got to do with this? And the point is, it doesn't matter. It's just a learning process. And so it was like, here we go again. But I managed to do that and eventually I ended up being the uh, running the, the ENT, ear, nose and throat research unit. However, at that stage, I realized that science wasn't my passion anymore. And I said, look, there must be something else to do. And the genesis of it was watching people at work who were not happy at work, but stuck in a job because they felt they had no choice. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's a travesty because you're wasting your life. There's only so many hours of your life left. And if you want me to go through the biology, I can tell you later. <laughs> about what, what, what's happening in your body uh, and also it, it, you might as well use your time wisely and that became the impetus because I thought i got to practice what I preach. If I'm no longer 100% excited about getting up in the morning to do my, my thing, then it's time to go because for one thing, I'm kidding myself and every time I put my hand out to get paid, I know I, I'm not giving 100% and uh, you know it's just sheer hypocrisy. So if 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 I say to people you, you got you got to go follow your passion etc then do it don't wow. say but 
don't say but thank you so much and what a wonderful journey on that note though how does one know what they're passionate about how does one like I, I know I've got a lot of friends and girlfriends who say uh, if I knew what it was I'd do it so how, do, how does that happen how do you find what you'll be passionate about okay to your girlfriends who say if I knew I'd say bullshit you do know <laughs> not willing to admit it to yourself okay mm. anybody with a brain two neurons firing at the same time <laughs> like it's a brain will have it it's just that it's buried under those layers of I have obligations I have fears I feel inadequate so let's let's go to the safe corner which is I'll just go, no, I don't know, I'll shrug my shoulders. You actually do know, you do have an opinion. Maybe at some stage you voiced that opinion and you were told to shut up. Uh, it doesn't matter. And so you went back into your shell. However, the thing is, is that you do know. And if you say it's too hard, then I say you're not trying. <laughs> mm, good tips. I like that. So... What I hear in the personal development world and, and what I have experienced also is that the consensus is if one and when one does find their passion, then the money doesn't matter. So um, we read a lot of books and a lot of um, articles about once you do what you love, money will flow. So how does how does that work, Laura? Like um, how, how does one get over that? That initial fear of okay, I, I want to, um, you know, maybe play in the band for the rest of my life and not have to worry about the mindset of where am I going to get the money from to pay the bills. Okay, two parts of the question. First of all, like you're just taking one step back. How do I know what my passion is? Uh, this is it. You, you touched on it. I will do it even if I don't get paid. That is the way you work it out, right? I'm not saying that you're not going to get paid. Um, in that case, it's like, oh dear, um, you will. The thing is, is that the criteria, number one, is will I get out of bed regardless of whether I get paid to do this or not? That's how you find your passion. You get lost in time. You get energized doing it. You feel in yourself happy and contented doing what you do. And the thing is that for those people who say, I don't know, well, if you just start and take the first step, uh, the next part will be revealed to you. It's almost like you don't get to see the whole picture. And the reason you don't get to see the whole picture is because you have no idea about the magnificence of you yet. And most people will be probably very frightened that when they are told, if they were told this is, this is how your life is going to pan out, they'll, they'll say, you know, they'd be, they would be packing their decks. Mm. Because, because it's like, I haven't got the capability, I haven't got this. And, and you know, that's the, that's the chatter in, in the back of the head, telling them what they can't do. Actually, it's not their voice. It's the voice of people who kind of like um, influenced them when they were children. Well-meaning perhaps, and sometimes not so well-meaning, and I'll tell you what I mean by that later on, that they've incorporated it into it. And, and they're told to play safe, play small, um, not play small, play safe, and uh, you know you be you be okay. Okay doesn't translate to being supremely happy in your life. And you will know when you're going to be happy in your life um, when you're actually doing what it is that that sort of you know floats your boat. Mm. So that's one aspect of, of, of that. Um, that the the thing about the money flowing. How about the fact that you have the ability or you have talents so that's what I believe everybody's blessed with talents but they're latent talents it's like being given a, a packet of tomato seeds until you chuck it in the ground and you prepare the ground and, and water it and look after it and tend and nurture it you're not going to get any fruit it's going to be nothing but a, but a packet of tomato seeds with pictures of tomatoes on it <laughs> that's all you're going to get <laughs> So it's the same thing until you, you, you invest time and energy into yourself, you're not going to get the returns and, you nev and you'll never know what you're capable of. When I said I was going to leave my job, I gave my boss actually a, a good 12 months notice and he said, thanks a lot, we'll be okay. Uh, and when I left, we had trouble filling the position because when I wrote out the, the job and person spec, the HR person said to me, 
this is a job for two people. And so that's it. You see, you, you learn and, and you sort of grow into it. All right? So mm. that's the thing that you don't realize. Eventually, it evolves with you. But you're so stuck in doing it, you don't realize that you've incorporated new skills uh, and, and all the things that you've acquired that then can be translated into your next role. So the money, you never know. Um, like something I found out with me is, is that I used to have to look at data and do analysis, scientific analysis all the time. And I'd look at the screen all the time with charts and graphs and sort of thing. And, I, you know, it's like, oh, my God, can we stop now? But now I've, what I've learned with that scientific uh, analysis ability is that I love forex trading and I love looking at charts and it just occurred to me, holy dooly, I'm doing the same thing. But now the skill's been transferred and it's doing something that is kind of fun, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's another way of generating income. It takes well, all of one hour in the morning to do the study the charts, place your trades, sure, you know, be smart the way you manage your, your, your risks. And then you go away and you think, whoop de doo and I can get, let's say, 4% return on my money per month. That's a lot better than going to the bank and saying I can get 4% per year. So never, never underestimate your uh, talents and skills that can be transferred in ways that you would never, never dreamed of. So that allows me to then go and do my thing kind of mm. thing for, for, for passion-wise without worrying about the bills. Because what I hear you say fundamentally is that people people say, I don't know my passion, which is another way of, it's a cop-out, because it's saying that I need to pay my bills, I've got a mortgage, I've got kids to raise, etc. And you're telling me to just chuck it all in and do follow my bliss, you know, blow it out your bum. Mm. <laughs> what are you saying to me? So when, when I talk to my clients and I say, okay, what are the skills you really have? That, that you know can be applied in different ways. And usually it just takes somebody to, to give you a different perspective. Mm. That's one aspect. The other aspect is having that belief in yourself. And you've got to know in yourself that this is, this is um, you know, I'm, I have a destiny. When I was a kid, that's the first thing. Most kids will wish for on their birthday for, you know, ponies or whatever, Barbie dolls. This is, this is how I thought, okay. What do I want for my birthday? My birthday wish was I wanted wisdom. Ah, it's like where did that come from? I don't know, but that that to me was was the purpose that there was a point to my existence. Yeah, and we're talking about a, a nine-year-old, a very old nine-year-old. Yes, yes, yeah, so true. It actually just reminded me yesterday I had um, coffee, excuse me, <coughs> with a girlfriend, and um, she stumbled. Well, she was a stay-at-home mum. She's still a stay-at-home mum. And she stumbled into her profession or used her skills, as you say, um, and is running a photography business. Now, when I first met her 18 months ago, she told she was taking a photo of me for a magazine and she said, I'm a, back car, a backyard amateur and I shouldn't be taking this photo. And automatically I uh, went into, you know, how can she be a backyard photographer when she is so well equipped with the skill and talent and is obviously here doing an interview photo for a large magazine and yesterday she um, reminded me of that but I also noticed that she still had issues on how much she is worth to charge so for the executive women out there that are you know following their passion following their 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 um, skills and are actually starting to make money from it what could you say to them when that little um that talk comes in to say you know what everyone else is charging two and a half thousand for a photo mm. shoot and i'm charging 500 how do we how do we get past that that ceiling or that mindset okay first of all you got to ask yourself um right with in terms of what i'm worth and the women tend to be a bit more self-effacing as in, I'm not good enough. I always put people on pedestals. Um, my answer to that is, stop it. Okay. <laughs> Get over it. Why? Because there are other people out there who do precisely the same thing you do and have no problems doing that. So when you, when you see that and you say, I'm not worth it, but the other person is, you've actually diminished yourself. 
And when you do that, you diminish your light, you diminish your worth. And if you believe in, in God, heaven, creator, who gave you those skills, you're actually giving them a slap in the face. Okay? That's as much awesome. as you are giving yourself a slap in the face for saying, you know, I'm playing small. Oh, for goodness sake, please. You know, the world doesn't need another small person. The world needs people who are big enough and bold enough to pursue their dreams because that's the only way the world is going to become a better place. All right? If you shrink and go into a corner, you're not going to be any freaking use to anybody else. Mm, so powerful. Thank you for that. And I think as women, we need to hear that, don't we? We need to hear that, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> <laughs> If you keep talking like that, <laughs> don't we, I think? Because, it, A, it takes up oxygen. <laughs> you tell me that story, that's another hour of my life I will never get back, mm. okay? Because what I want to see is the person blossom, and we all have that capacity. You know, when you play small, um, okay, there might have been times when you wanted to be to step out and be big, and somebody told you, you know, stop it, um, you know, slapped you down because, oh, my goodness, you're going to be – better than us kind of thing. It's like the crowd you move with, okay? Are they supporting you or are they saying, hey, you're getting a bit big for your boot to land, you know, don't do that. And it's said in so many subtle ways that we are made to conform. When you know who you are, you don't give a shit. Oh, sorry. You don't, <laughs> Go, <girl. laughs> you don't care what people think because, man, they have their lives to live, you have yours. And while you follow that, heard that peer group that's not supportive um, you're going to waste your life and I know that for a fact being having a scientific background about okay I'll give you a lesson in cell biology very mm, quickly please do. okay we have a we have a finite number our cells rather will divide a finite number of times and after that they die each time they divide the DNA, which is in there, the, the the ends of it will shorten and shorten and shorten. They're called telomeres for people who want to know. And so when it gets to a certain stage where it's so short, the body actually recognizes it that, you know, you've, you've run your course, you're dead. Literally, it, it, will, it will just kill itself. Um, your cells will just uh, then disintegrate and all the bits and pieces that are useful are reincorporated. The ones that are not, well, they get shunted out. So understand that regardless of whether you live your magnificent life or you live tiny, tiny, tiny lives, you're going to have the same number of cell cycles that are going to occur. So, folks, what would you prefer for you? How would you like to spend your energy and your life force? Because that's all you're going to get, okay? Mm -hmm. So do it, do it well. It's almost like you've been given this gift, you know. You can either sit on it, chuck it in the bin, or nurture it and make it grow a la the tomato seeds. You can either go and look at the tomato seed, packet of tomato seeds and think, gee, they're, they're great. Or you can actually get out there and plant them and do something with it and watch it grow and watch it bear fruit and watch it give joy to other people as well. Because you never know what you're doing now, how it is going to impact and influence positively the lives of other people around you. It ain't going to happen while you're sitting on your bum in, on your couch feeling sorry for yourself and saying, I can't charge more than 500 bucks. Get over it. Mm, well, wonderful words of wisdom. Your birthday wish came true. That's fabulous advice. And I, and I really do hope that she's going to watch this <laughs> along with everybody else because that's just so powerful. Um, thank you. Now, moving on then, and I, I know as a woman um, – that we we wear many hats, don't we? We 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 go to work, or we have a business, and we have our families to run, and we have children, and we've got to turn up for sporting activities, and then be on the PNC committee, and whatever else. And let's not even think about spending any time on ourselves, whether we want to have a hobby, if that's even you know in the radar to find the time to do that. So what do you say to these women? And there is many of them out there actually going, yeah, that's all great, you know, but how do I fit that into my busy life? Because as women, we nurture our family and we give so much. So how do, there's two questions there, sorry. Um, it, I just love talking to you, worth of wisdom. Um, so how do we actually get that balance for us? All right. First things first, start with yourself. Sorry, family. Um, <laughs> especially when 
you've got, like you say, so many hats. Your wife, your mother, your businesswoman, your friend, uh, your daughter. In, in that case, you've got elderly parents, etc. And this is what happens. We put ourselves at the end of the queue. At the end of the day, we're burnt out. So it's it's back to front. I would say look after yourself first. And the only the things that you can do for yourself, even though you've got all these things around you which demand your time and energy, is this. First thing in the morning, you tell your kids or you tell whoever it is, you know, 15 minutes, this is my time. And like for me, the ritual for me, first thing in the morning is that I go out and meditate. I commune with nature, God, and I just stay centered and grounded for the rest of the day. It's almost like saying, you know, I can't start the day without having a sh- shower. Mm. And that's the that's the equivalent in terms of a, a, the ritual. So what it says to me is that I value myself, and I'm going to put myself first. Fifteen minutes, right? That's all you're going to. It's all you're going to have to to put aside for yourself. And then after that, in that fifteen minutes, you get centered. You start. What happens then is that you, you start seeing with a lot more clarity the things which are important in, in your life. Now, let's say if, if you've been doing the running around for the kids or you, or you cook the meals, if, if they are at the age where they can read the packet of meal, mm-hmm. okay, they know how to use a microwave, um, how about they start taking some responsibility within the home for that as well? You might be eating some strange stuff, but the point is the kids – get trained to do that otherwise there becomes a a case of if if mother is unwell the whole place falls apart okay yeah then you got to ask yourself the question because you're in yourself in the morning session with yourself is like do i really need them to love me do i need to do this so that they will love me mm. okay and if in fact it is because your sense of self-worth is predicated on them saying my mum's a terrific person or that I'm so needed that, you know, if, if without me the, th- the whole place falls apart, then you've got to say to yourself, okay, how come I need them to love me? Why can't I love myself for who I am first? So true. Yeah, and that challenges a lot of women because mm. their roles, because they see themselves as the caregivers, therefore their sense of worth comes from, you know, what I do. Mm. Not who I am. And hopefully the kids will get the hint and learn to do the dishes, learn to do, the, you know, they can do the dishes, they can do the laundry, can't they? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Okay. you got two arms, two legs, you know. If you can go and kick a football playing sport, right, you can use the same arms and legs and coordinate things like putting clothes on pegs. <laughs> How's that? Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> And does that suddenly then free up your time for you? Mm. Because another way of doing it, uh, which will cost just a little bit of money, is to learn to outsource. My time is not worth transcribing interviews I do with people as well, you know. Mm. I outsource to a lady in, in, um, in the Philippines. And for the money, it, it, it's, you know, it costs to, to do that. Man, I tell you what, she does a, a brilliant job. And also it, it's, um, it's done in a way that I've given her a job. I've given her, you know, I've made the economy turn over. Mm-hmm. When I realized the, the average annual salary um, income in, in the Philippines relative to here, it just blew me away. And the fact that what I gave her as a project would be the equivalent of, of, of a, a week or two weeks salary. Yeah. Just one transcription. We took her a couple of hours because the, the exchange is done in US dollars. So it's like, wow. And... It's a pay it forward kind of concept for me, mm. right? So strong, very, very, you know, very, very true. And I think again, that's another mind shift that we we all can um, take on board, can't we? When we think about paying it forward. Coming back though, I just um, something close to my heart. So I, I really would like to tap into your words of wisdom here. Is do you see many women over the age of forty? Oh, I see them. It's a quite a spectrum nowadays. Mm. It's almost like they 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 uh, they get to their forties in their thirties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how, how they say that you, you got the the forty year itch, etc., and so forth, where you think, you know, what, what the hell am I doing? And, and uh, I've been going to work, the grind, that kind of thing. There is something more for me. 
it's it's the age um, gap is getting sort of towards the younger end. Like in their thirties, they're starting to realize that there's more to life than uh, punching a clock. Mm. And yes, the, at the other end of the spectrum, there are people I know who have had um, uh, gone through a, a period of time, work, 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 or looked after, looked after people, not necessarily kids, but being carers, and then decided, hey, you know, it's it's time, and in their late 40s, 50s, for me to look after myself. And they've put themselves on the back burner for a very long time. And I think at, at some level they realize, you know, they're not going to get their youth back. So you better make use of what you've got now mm. into the future. So and true. all is not lost. No. So that's wonderful. Now, now that brings me into my next question then because I have an 18-year-old daughter who is really seeking her passion and searching. Um, what would you say to the young girls, you know, the young ones out there that um, I don't like to use the word lost because they're finding their way and they're developing skills, as you say, that will enhance their life and um, but what would you say to somebody that's 18 or 19 that really doesn't know where to go, what to do? They're a lot, I think the younger generation are a lot more switched on to, to what makes them feel better. So they're emotionally mm. intelligent than what we were at that, or I was at that age. So what could you say to them? I say, you know, first of all, you're, these people are absolutely so fortunate. They're so blessed to be here and now where they are at their age and also with the sort of happenings in terms of the technology around them. Uh, I, one question I would ask them is <clears throat> if you couldn't fail, if failure was like, meh, um, what would you do? Mm. And start and start to dream and, and be as, I, I guess, out there uh, and and expansive as, as as you want, you know. One of my dreams really is to uh, is to be able to buy back the island of Borneo. Wow! <laughs> and basically, you know, stuff all these palm oil plantations, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and and get the place back to what it was, and get the indigenous people back to the way they used to look after the land. And so, you know, the the, the orangutans would be able to breed and be in an environment where the ecosystem was balanced. You know, the people took what they needed, that's it. The rest of it took care of itself because it's self-regulated. Mm. That is the sort of stuff that, that is, they can say bombastic, but hey, many other things have, have started with somebody going, I have this idea, and Absolutely. it's grown from there. Absolutely. So it's such a beautiful idea and concept and a dream to have. So thank you for sharing that with us. You never know, maybe we can get a group of us together to buy it. <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> um, Laura, before we finish up, I know you're passionate about coaching, you know, executive women. And um, you do that very well, obviously, from everything that you've taught, taught us here today. Is there anything that you would like to share that I possibly haven't asked you today or something that you would like us or the listeners to take home? Okay. This goes back to your friend, the photographer. Um, I, I've got this quote uh, from Brian Tracy. I've got two quotes, actually. One from Brian Tracy, which says, you cannot outperform your self-image. Okay. So if you want to raise the bar, if you want to get a bigger life, you want to get more more happiness, more contentment, more money, more everything, more health. Start with your, with raising your own self-esteem, okay, because that ultimately is the yardstick and the ceiling that you place on yourself. It's not what other people say, you know, you can say, but he was responsible for making me feel, uh, no, it, it is through your interpretation of it. Mm. Uh, it's seen through the lens of of, of who you are and if you feel really small and tiny and insignificant and um, insecure everything will be seen as um, you know an action that's that's designed to make me feel smaller to denigrate me to, to, to put me down okay whereas for some people it, it's got nothing to do with you it's got nothing to do with that it's basically your perception of yourself so build your own self-esteem and one way of doing it, I found, was, okay, through using a Beyond Success coach and, and having a coach who actually was emotionally intelligent and switched on to help me find these things that were happening in my life. Okay, the reason why I could leave my job was because I found one day, it just, just the realization that I am not my job. 
and I could walk away from it. The money was good. There was prestige. You know, people call me Dr. Tan. Woo. Okay, big deal. But the novelty wears off very quickly. <laughs> But the point is, that was not me. When I, when I said to my boss then, you know, it was my professor, a surgeon, an eminent surgeon, and I said to him, I said to him you know, um, it's not about the money. I am not my job. He looked slightly, he squirmed a bit. That's when I realized, mm, you're still there. Mm. It's all tied up with you there still. So that was when I could just say, you know, goodbye, job, um, and, and, and take off. And I thought, what am I getting myself into? Who knows? If this all falls flat, I could be a bag lady living under a bridge, pushing my Woolies cart around the place. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I did not want to die not knowing whether I could or could not do this. Okay, get out from, from a so-called secured paid job. So similarly, that was pretty dependent on me saying, okay, who am I? What am I about? Do I have a faith that connects me, that says I am on the right track? And that when life throws curveballs, that, you know, you're okay, that you can, if you can dodge them, great. If you get smacked, get up, you know. So that sort of thing. So you cannot outperform your self-image as one. The other one is from um, The Art of War by Sun Tzu, a fourth century um, warrior philosopher. And he said, if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Mm. So what's, what's the number one rule? Know yourself. Okay. You can say, know the enemy is, is people doing reconnaissance and working out what the other, what the other party is, is, is all about. But remember, if you haven't got the wherewithal inside, and that can be cultivated, then you will always succumb because you will be second-guessing yourself you will doubt yourself, and uh, basically, you you'll get you just get run over. Beautiful. So, yeah, work on yourself first, and it goes back to this thing about being a mother and having too many hats and etc. You probably work out if you're ruthless enough that a lot of it can be, you know, hived off to other people, or other people within your household can start assuming responsibility, um, and. It, I, I, like I said, you know, if, if if the kid can read, can can knows how to use a microwave, <laughs> among other things, they can they can organize meals, right? Absolutely. So that it frees you up. Hmm. Yeah, but it changes the status quo, and it will take some uh, gentle persuasion, because if they've been trained to depend on that person, the mother, they're not going to like it hmm. for a while. Uh, but then it will be the best thing for them. Like like this young. 18 year old who probably will need skills when they leave home to start looking after themselves unless they're going to turn up every night for meals <laughs> and, and bring their laundry place. home <laughs> 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 Shaylee, it's not open tonight yeah. um, so that that's sort of a thing so th that that would be the, the final words of you know no I won't say work on yourself but strengthen your self-esteem muscle like anything mm. else that's that's the one thing. Remember when it when all hell breaks loose and there's a you're in the middle of a shitstorm. That's the only thing you're gonna have, and you better 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 cling onto that as your last hope because that is your last hope. That's the only hope you've got. Mm, wonderful. And in listening to you, I mean, you definitely are words of wisdom. I had this massive insight because we were. I don't want to go into it now. We should have another interview. Um, but when you were speaking about the cycle of the cells and, you know, the, the person and the women and everything, I've just had this massive insight that everything in life is a cycle, isn't it? You know, our cells, our personalities, everything that we do, we can break the cycle, we can strengthen the cycle or we can stay with it. It's a choice. Mm. Yeah, awesome. And we have a choice as women to actually strengthen, as you said, the self-esteem cycle or the self-esteem muscle and um, become powerful beyond our own means. 
Oh, yes. Mm. And the world better watch out. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's truly been a pleasure for me, and as as I no doubt my listeners will enjoy it so much also uh, listening to your words of wisdom. So if anybody's out there, Lori, that really would like to investigate what coaching is uh, or maybe just to understand how do they strengthen their self-esteem muscle, how can they get in contact with you? Okay. Just go to www.executivewomencoaches.com. Oh, so, wonderful. Yep. Okay. So e x e c u t i v v e w o m e n c o a c h e s dot com. Executivewomencoaches.com. And you'll see a happy face there. That's mine. <laughs> and uh, they can get in contact with me by going to office at executivewomencoaches.com and drop me a line. Oh, wonderful. And thank you again for your words of wisdom. It's surely been my pleasure. I've had many aha moments. So thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You're most welcome. Have a great day. You too. Ciao for now. Bye.